On Wednesday, the 15th of June 2016, the reception hall of the Island Club played host to the third edition of the Island Club's Public Interest Symposium series, tagged The Second Coming of Buhari, One Year After the Economy and the Polity. The symposium kicked off with the national anthem and opening prayer, after which there was the introduction of the chairman and officers of the Island Club, dignitaries, guest speakers, and the chairman of the occasion. His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Oladakbo Fafura, who ably chaired the occasion, introduced the first guest, Mr. Bismack Jerewani, revered economic analyst and the CEO of Financial Derivatives Limited. Mr. Bismack Rewani gave an illuminating and lucid presentation through which he pointed out the economic problems of the country and also expertly preferred useful and possible solutions to them. Mr. Bismack Rewani went on to note that Nigeria is at economic crossroads, therefore the pace of economic change must be consistent with political and social change. If you devalue your currency, which is a wrong word, it's actually an adjustment of your currency value to make it realistic. What are we going to export? How are we going to meet and maintain our standard of living? The reality is your standard of living is a function of what you produce. And even if you don't export, produce locally. And I've heard people in the government say that the only way to produce locally is to ban the imports of things and keep the exchange rate well, let me tell you, the only way to produce locally is if the exchange rate makes it impossible for me to buy something, I will look for a local substitute. If I cannot go and do my dental checkup in England, I'll look for a very good dentist here. And if all of us go to that dentist, that dentist will make money. But it is not because you ban me or restrict me from having access to the money to go and see my dentist. It's the market. Because once I have bought my petrol at 145, have you seen how many people have stopped buying so many things because they have spent so much money buying petrol and buying things that are expensive? That's how the markets react. Last month, the price of tomatoes went up to 45,000 naira a basket. Today, it's down to less than 30,000 naira a basket. The pest is not a problem. What has happened is that people, many people have gone to produce tomatoes and many people have stopped buying tomatoes. They went to buy tomato pests and all. Beans went up to 27,000 naira, 50 kb, kg bag, or what have you. 27,000 naira for the non inexpensive version, which is called Olotu. Now that has come down all the way back to 17,000. Why? Because people just reduced the amount of beans they were using. And some of them reduced the amount of akara they were eating and the amount of moimoi and all of that because those, all those are compounded products that come from beans. So do not believe it. This is not an economic issue. This is a common sense issue. When a country makes it its culture and its people to live above their means, to spend on things they cannot afford, to aspire on things which they cannot sustain, the ultimate outcome of that is crisis. A crisis of what? False expectation? A crisis that leads to kidnapping and ransom? A crisis that leads to people saying that bad behavior should be rewarded? And those are the, that's the social impact. So, what direction are we going? Painfully and slowly, we are going in the right direction. This slowdown, or this recession, will be followed by a recovery process. And do not be deceived that the recovery is going to be a V-curve. That is, you are going to wake up tomorrow and go back to your old habits. No. This is going to be like an L-shaped recovery. It's going to be flat at the bottom, and then before it comes up. The audience also had a chance to ask questions, which he answered. The second guest speaker, Mr. Debo Adeshino, a hard-nosed reporter, writer of evocative prose, and editor-in-chief of Guardian newspapers, 
gave a riveting and poignant lecture, which he tagged, Buhari Today, Tomorrow, the archives have it. He pointed out that Nigeria of today is in dire straits, therefore the president has to be bold and willing to restructure the country. He also stated that it was pertinent that we implement the available reforms at hand to engender the renaissance that is much needed by Nigerians and not to relegate them to the archives. Finally, he enjoined Nigerians to pray that Mr. President be guided by a spirit of responsibility to the future of a united, peaceful and prosperous Nigeria and may he find the will to build that future. Nigerians wanted change and yearn for it and now we have it. We have a, a man who is certainly a complete departure from the tardiness and drudgery which had come to become the signature of the Good Luck Jonathan administration. Today, complaints abound of Buhari's very slow pace and a palpable confusion in his decision-making processes as well as in personnel de de deployment have combined with impatience on our part which is rooted in our expectation, our expectation that they rose, to now cast this regime in less than glowing light than it came into office with. However, I want to believe President Buhari is still the disciplined officer and a gentleman of integrity Nigerians voted for. Many people still love him, no doubt. And given where the nation had been prior to his coming, he remains the knight in a shining hammer, the love of whom still burns in many hearts. By the time he took over on May 29, 2015, Nigeria was a wounded nation with a deep physical gash on her body, inflicted by Boko Haram terrorists and sundry security challenges. This was compounded by the moral wound on the nation's soul, inflicted by mindless corruption and poor management of resources. Of course, with the election of 19, 2015, distrust was sown all over Nigeria, and the emotional wound on the soul of Nigeria was very raw. When he won election, therefore, what President Buhari was given was a very unique mandate to heal Nigeria, to renew our essence, and be the architect of a national renaissance. More than the roads, the dams, the bridges that Buhari will build for us, more than the power he will supply or the infrastructure he will restore, Buhari has a responsibility to build Nigeria's future on a solid foundation. Now, to build infrastructure, our president or his government needs money. To build a united and prosperous future for Nigeria, he needs an additional currency, which I call the will. But let us talk about money, because we all love money. We are familiar with the saying that money talks. Money actually does talk. And with what Nigeria is going through today, I'm sure all of us know what money has said to Nigeria. Bye-bye. Money just said goodbye to us. But even when we were rich, Nigeria has only had a fury debate over our revenue. And how it should be spent or shared between the central government and the federating states. You had the Raisman Commission in 1958. You had the Boyade Commission. You had the Okibo Commission. All kinds of commissions were set up. And there are all kinds of ideas about how we should share our resources. Today, the present revenue sharing formula is completely at variance with the principle of federalism. And it's at the root of various threats to the unity and prosperity of Nigeria. The ideal is that a country that is supposed to be a federation should have a revenue allocation formula that is consistent with that formula. But that is not the case. The ratio between states and federal government is very, very lopsided, inequitable, exploitative, and reduces the lower tiers of government to mere appendages of the FG. This ridicules the design of our founding fathers and of a federal system of government, which by nature possesses that every constituent unit must be sufficiently independent of the center in a way that the unity of the whole is not compromised. The warped arrangement we operate today, which has consigned state governments to perpetual beggars, is not only unproductive, it actually holds down the progress of Nigeria. The chairman of the occasion, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. Oladak Fafura, gave an engaging and insightful, albeit impromptu, presentation where he called for the reduction in the enormous cost of governance in the country and also a check to excessive spending and wastefulness of top government officials. Ambassador Dr. Oladak Wafafura appreciated the guest speakers and the Island Club for organizing the symposium. When I entered the foreign service, we were not more than 20 administrative officers. 20. The diplomatic class. And until the time I left, you couldn't four or five at most on level 17. Now everybody's on level 17. <laughs> How can 
How can you run a country like that where everybody is the boss? <laughs> they say there are too many Indians, very few generals. But there are too many generals, there are few Indians. So the cost of governance, the cost I have seen, I, 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 I was in the civil service about 20, 30 years. And since then, the, the type of government that the, the wastage is unbelievable. You cannot believe it. How within the civil service money is just being wasted. People collect allowances to attend conferences. They don't go. They don't attend. In my own time, I was ambassador at the UN. The regulation within 24 hours of your returning from a foreign uh, trip or conversion will return the money. You can't pocket. It's not possible. It was not possible. So we must rebuild our institutions. This country will not make progress as fast as it should if we don't have credible institutions. The chairman of the Island Club, Mr. Oladakbo Opeshei, SAN, profusely thanked the guest speakers, Mr. Bismarck Jeriwani and Mr. Debo Adeshino, the chairman of the occasion, Ambassador Dr. Oladakbo Fafura, chairman of the subcommittee of experts, Professor Adeleji Nodu, the audience, and the media houses present. I want to personally thank all members of this great subcommittee. I need to, I, by way of tribute to your time and your effort, I want to profusely again thank you. You have done it again. The communique, as usual, will be sent to the presidency and to all relevant agencies who should have this. And I believe that uh, with the array of media men we have here today, yeah, we will see it on the on the electronic media and there will also be privileged to have it on on both print and uh, the real visual media the television we are grateful to all of you afterwards he called on chief olu falamo a past chairman of the island club to present a plaque to the guest speakers it gives me the greatest pleasure to be presenting this to the newest member <laughs> Of Island Club. You're most welcome. We're very proud of you. May the good Lord continue to bless you. Uh, I know the sky is still the limit. Uh, we will have more of this. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. God bless you. The chairman of the Island Club then presented a plaque to the chairman of the occasion, Ambassador Dr. Fafuwara for being the chairman of the third edition of the Island Club's Public Interest Symposium on the topic, the second Buhari administration, one year after the economy and the policy, delivered by Mr. Bismarck J. Rewani and Mr. Debo Additional. This day, Wednesday, 15th of June, 2016. Mr. Chairman, I thank you. Professor Adele Jinodu gave the official vote of thanks, and the symposium was brought to a close with the Island Club's anthem. Island Club, the emblem of the peacock, is for truth and dignity. Island Club is for fellowship, is Beep, beep, beep.